Um, yeah, today I'm going to be talking about comics, catharsis, and connection to culture, and just kind of giving a little bit of background about myself and my personal art inspirations. So, a little bit about me to begin. Prepare to be shocked and amazed. This is me when I was like three years old with a lot of static going on. Um, yeah, I was born in Vancouver, raised in Surrey, and now I live back in Vancouver. So born, born and bred here. Um, I'm half Chinese, half white, and um, I'll talk a little bit about how my Chinese culture kind of influences my work uh, a little bit later in the talk. But yeah, ever since I was a little kid, ever since I, I was a wee one in this, in this little photo here, um, I loved drawing. I loved art. I had a million sketchbooks started all the time. And honestly, I, I just liked buying new sketchbooks. So there's many sketchbooks that have like two pages filled. I'm sure, you know, if you're an artist yourself, you can relate to that. Um, yeah, I've, I've always been interested in art and drawing and, um, I also had quite a bit of like an entrepreneurial mindset growing up too, like in, in elementary school in like grade one, I would make little bookmarks and sell them for 10 cents to my classmates. And I would make drawings and sell them for like a quarter to my mom. Uh, and then that fund I would use to like buy stuffed animals and, and, and whatnot. <laughs> so it's funny that it's, it's quite similar now 22 years after this photo was taken, um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of the same things. <laughs> um, yeah, when I was in elementary school, I remember doing a project that it was, it was like, a, what, what do you want to be when you grow up sort of project. So I was like 10 years old and I wrote, I want to be a graphic designer. Um, and it's kind of been the path that I've been following ever since. So now jumping forward about 10 years, to high school. Um, this is me doing art in high school. Uh, I took art classes all throughout. Um, the image on the right there is when I was in my like kind of emo scene phase. Still pretty emo on the inside, but uh, I did. I don't have the dyed black hair and uh, side swept bangs anymore. But ever since I was like 12, 13, I, I did a lot of digital art on the computer as well. Um, so here's one of my early self portraits that I did in Corel Paint Shop Pro. Um, it's interesting to look back and kind of see how my style has changed. Um, and going into that, uh, throughout high school, this is, this is some of the work that I did in late high school. So in grade 12, I did the AP art program. And in my pieces, I had like, I, I used a lot of colors and I used a lot of layered textured approaches to my pieces. Um, I loved working with watercolor and acrylic. Uh, I, I, I use a lot of acrylic now, but watercolor isn't something that I uh, re really use as a medium anymore. I love the fluidity of it. And it's again, like, quite a contrast to my work right now, which is very crisp and clean and minimal. Um, but yeah, this was kind of my style in high school. And although like I poured myself into art in, in high school, I never really saw it being like a career. Um, I was always interested in creative areas, which is why I became a designer. And I've always been interested in that and photography and video and marketing and, and all these other things, but I'd never thought that pursuing like fine art or illustration was something that would be a viable option for me. And my mom, she always wanted me to do business, of course, so kind of settled on a happy medium, uh, taking communication at SFU. I also did some SEAT, which is the School of Interactive Arts and Technology courses at SFU. Um, so that kind of led me on my, my path to working in design. And right now for my full-time job, uh, I work as a designer, video producer, um, photographer, illustrator, and I do art and tattooing kind of on the side, but they, they blend together. It, both my design and my art kind of inform each other. So yeah.
I only like throughout university and and the years from like 2013 when I graduated high school until 2018 I didn't really do much fine art I wasn't drawing basically at all I was pretty burnt out with my school projects all the time and I didn't really have any time for pursuing personal things but in 2018 I tried to make a concerted effort to give myself a bit of a challenge and um, challenge myself to do a daily daily drawing, uh, which was Inktober, which many people may have heard of before. So this ties into kind of the origin of how craft art and like my current style uh, has come to be. So yeah, in October of 2018, I did an Inktober challenge. It wasn't um, Inktober itself, it was a daily prompt by Crush Club, Crush Club Collective. Um, now I kind of just wanted to challenge myself to um, do a post a day. And you can see these are these are some of my earliest posts. And the one on the left is a pretty popular print of mine, one of my one of my favorites as well. Um, but it was one of the uh, Inktober challenges. And my style was pretty um, influenced by now having worked as a graphic designer for a few years, it's a lot more minimalistic. Um, it's digital. Um, it's a lot cleaner, bolder and crisper. But you can see even in these early craft art ones how I have a bit more of like the sketchy loose style. Um, on the left, the color palette is not as you know minimal as it is now, which I primarily only use black, red, and occasionally bright blue and bright yellow. But you can also see that I have some like sketchy lines of shading, especially on the right, I have the, you know, sketch lines around the woman there. Um, going into the next one, this, this is one of my favorite pieces. It's, it's also one of the um, popular pieces that I have too. Like a lot of people resonate with this one and uh, buy it as a print. Um, so this one was an Inktober prompt as well. And the word for this one was crammed. Um, and just a little plug, if you're around downtown Vancouver and you wanna check it out, the image on the right, um, I was very honored to participate in the Canvas Corridor project put on by the city of Vancouver. And um, yeah, the, there's a Ihu lane and every door is, every door in the lane is kind of like plastered with a, cool piece of art made by a Vancouver artist. So definitely check that out, little plug there. So I don't know if I would have continued doing craw art sort of things um, if it weren't for like this little life incident that occurred to me midway through Inktober 2018. So yeah, October, right in, right in the middle of October, pretty much to this day, I guess it's almost two years ago to the day. Um, but I got my heart broken for the first time. Of course, every good art is born from heartbreak. Um, but yeah, this is the first time that I had felt these sad, heartbroken emotions. So the piece on the left, um, the, the prompt for that day was dark slash light. And it's funny because like this was so this was my my Inktober drawing on the left, right after getting my heart broken. So, I um I remember some friends who weren't like aware of my relationship status were like, yeah, like I I noticed your stuff getting really sad after that, and I kind of just used craw art as an outlet to express all these negative negative emotions that I was feeling at the time. So the image on the right, um, it's a, a little bit, you know, I think the one on the left was maybe the first four panel piece that I had done. And four panel is, is something that I really like to do and I, I resonate with a lot. So the one on the right, um, I probably did it maybe a, a few weeks after. And uh, it's, a, it's kind of the evolution of, uh, of this, this four panel style that I have. And uh, yeah, this one was also kind of about 
the heartbreak. This was a plant that we had bought together and I liked using it as like a little symbol for the relationship. And um, yeah, kind of doing little double entendres, visual double entendres uh, as well uh, with these pieces. So from being heartbroken, I kind of continued to express my emotions in this um, comic format. And here's the same plant. So this is stuff that's like kind of actually going on in my day to day life. Like this plant was actually dying. It probably like had root rot or something like that. But I was just seeing it as this sad symbol of this failed relationship and the relationship just withering away one by one, one leaf by one. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of channeled these feelings into uh into these little comics and um i kind of use them as as a form of poetry as well as often and i'll, I'll go to the next slide here like often i i'd come up with the lines first and then um and then make the illustrations to follow so i liked using these as kind of like daily life and representations of like a slice of life really. So I would just be kind of contemplative and, and sad and like staring into a corner of my room and then just kind of come up with, with these things that were just informed by my surroundings and my, my inner feelings. So small anecdote with this one, um, I love light play. I love slice of life sort of things. Um, this is just my, my bookshelf that's right in front of me right now. And I love capturing kind of just tiny, beautiful moments. So um, when I was in high school and probably even elementary school, I was obsessed with this one line that I would use in basically all of my short stories. Everything that I wrote had the line, the sunlight filtered through the Venetian blinds. So I've always kind of been obsessed with that little little feeling and just just seeing sunlight filter through something and this was kind of you know my evolved take on the the same thing and this is one of my personal favorite favorite pieces and and lines so these phrases would kind of pop into my head and i never i'd never have like enough to flesh them out really. Like I think of a concept like this dancing dust. Um, and so before, before making comics, I would have these lines in my head just kind of floating around. And being able to put them in a comic format really grounded them. And it was the perfect outlet to being able to translate these ideas without having to make it into a full poem or a full book or something like a larger comic. They were able to kind of live in just a small, illustrative format and yeah I'm really happy that I kind of thought to pair these little phrases that would pop into my head uh, with imagery. So like I mentioned in the past one um, I like using comics to illustrate slice of life um, things so they can also be uh, informed by things that are just happening in my day-to-day -day life so on the left, I was just walking to work one day. The sun was feeling so beautiful and I was feeling a lot of gratitude that day. And the words just kind of came into my head. So then I kind of, what I do is I, the words come into my head and then I like make a little sketch uh, to, to illustrate the words afterwards. Um, and I have like a iPhone note completely filled with, uh, random phrases, very disjointed here and there that I would like to, you know, make into comics at some point. The one on the right, um, I was in, I was on the Sunshine Coast. This was the first time I saw bioluminescence, as, as you can see in the comic. And I remember walking out onto the dock, a couple of my friends were already on the dock and they were ooing and aahing at the bioluminescence. And, and I remember it was the most still night, like not a sound. It was so crisp and, uh, and clear. And I, as soon as I walked onto that dock, like 
th this line popped into my head immediately and you know kind kind of spoiled the beautiful moment to have to like pull out my phone and like write it down but I was like I I want to I want to capture this I want to make a little comic out of this so comics really just became a way for me to express my emotions and and really that that ties into the catharsis element of this talk um i was really able to to get out a lot of feelings even positive feelings like in, in these two ones um in these two pieces here and yeah it, it was such a good emotional outlet that i had hadn't experienced in a long time like i hadn't diaried or journaled since I was a child. Um, there were really, there was really no way for me to like kind of let these emotions out into. I mean, I cry all the time. Uh, so I, I'd be crying, crying onto my iPad doing these things, but there was no kind of like tangible way for me to express these emotions before, uh, before making them into comics and illustrations. Um, so that also ties into this character that I have, Soft Boy. He, I don't even really know how he became named Soft Boy, other than that he is soft and squishy. Uh, it just kind of made sense. So the image on the right, uh, I think it might have been the first time that this character was ever used. And I kind of created him not with a not with a set intention in mind, but he's kind of become a way for me to express emotions that I feel too vulnerable to put myself into. So I do have drawings of myself, literally, like in the in the previous two comics that I showed. Um, but sometimes I feel too vulnerable and too awkward or too shy to to really put myself into these things that I'm feeling. So I kind of use soft boy as an outlet uh, to express the, the inner vulnerabilities and inner emotions. And yeah, he's, he's kind of a, a vessel to get, um, to get those tender, vulnerable feelings out. So now time into culture. So this is my Akong on the left, my grandpa. Um, and my grandpa, he was the most prolific artist. So I grew up uh, with my grandparents living, living with my parents and I. Um, and my grandpa, he would always be making something. So he would be making like a mobile figure out of, uh, out of paper. He'd be weaving paper. He would be doing color pencil illustrations. He'd be doing like graphite drawings. He'd draw me, he'd draw just anything. And he, he carved um, these beautiful tables that, that, that are seen here. Um, and every one of my mom's family members has a version of this table that he made. Um, and it's, it's just like a beautiful family heirloom. And he's kind of, he, he not only passed on these tangible art pieces to everyone in our family, but he kind of give, gave a familial thread of, of artistic passion to, to everyone in my family. So my, all of, everyone on my mom's side um, has some sort of artistic flair, like my art, my, my art, my aunt is a painter, my cousins are in architecture and design and um, everybody, Everybody on my mom's side pursues some sort of artistic thing, which is really cool to me. So the illustration on the right is just kind of my modern take on this um, coffee table that my grandpa carved. And it's funny, like when I was a little kid, I, I wouldn't even like think about it. I'd see it every single day in my parents' house and I would just be like kicking my feet up on it, lounging around it. And now I'm like, this is such a beautiful, beautiful representation of my family and and my culture and my background and just craftsmanship in general like it's such a stunning piece uh and it's funny you know when you're a little kid you don't you don't you don't even think of those things you take a lot of things for granted and i think i took a lot of 
my culture for granted when I was a kid. Like I didn't really want to be Chinese. I went to Chinese school. I went to like private Mandarin lesson lessons, like home, home tutoring sort of thing. And I hated it. Like I never wanted to do it. Any, any character practice that I did was like, just, I, I wasn't learning anything. I, I just did it because I had to. And now like, that's something that I really regret. Um, not kind of taking the, taking these opportunities that were given to me when I was younger to, you know, really connect to my culture. And so in the past two years, I've been making a concerted effort to try to connect back a lot more. And my mom and I are, you know, planning to, to do Chinese lessons together and stuff like that. My mom does have a bit of knowledge, but um, she and, and her siblings grew up in India, actually. So a lot of, um, even, even her connection to Chinese culture is a little bit uh, different than, than a lot of other people's experiences. So yeah, um, another way that I've been trying to connect back to my culture um, through my art is through food. So food is like one of the most nostalgic things. Every culture has like bonds around food. And I wanted to connect back to that nostalgia. Um, on the, the left is one of my most popular favorite pieces that I have. Um, and it's, it's all of my favorite dim sum items. And the one in the middle is Tao Fa. And my grandma, my Apo, she would always call me Tao Fa because I was soft, sweet, and tender because I was so sensitive and I would cry all the time. So she'd be like, don't be so Tao Fa. Um, and yeah, that's my little homage to her there. So these are some pieces that I made recently um, for a pop-up show hosted by The Art Shop here in Vancouver. And um, I kind of wanted to, with these pieces, just explore like beautiful symbolism in Chinese art. So these are kind of symbols that are seen in a lot of decor around my parents' house. And I kind of just wanted to do a modern take, a modern interpretation of these beautiful symbols that, that were hanging, hanging all around me as a child. Same goes for this, like there's a few scrolls in my, in my parents' house as well. So I wanted to do like my sort of interpretation on a scroll and kind of like just very, you know, abstract way of doing a, a scroll, but uh, this is my homage to it as well. So the last thing that I want to touch on is community and just the, the value in, in the people around you that I've definitely experienced to the 10th degree uh, in the past two years. So on the left is one of my best friends, Matt. And like, I don't think I would be here today if it weren't for him. Like he is such a wonderful, caring, mentoring person. And we've worked on like a lot of art, a lot of event planning together. And uh, we're just kind of partners in not crime, but partners in art, P partners. Oh, put a little parentheses around art there. Um, yeah, I'm so grateful to have met such a wide array of amazing artists through doing art for the last two years. In the middle here, I am in the garden. Um, this is the first day that I uh, took my prints to the shop there and uh, Matt, Matt came with me, he took this picture. And on the right is um, Chinatown House, uh, Creative Chinatown Fair, which I've been a part of a few times. So I've also done a lot of zine fairs and whatnot. This year was supposed to be my first um, comic arts festival, VanCAF. Uh, unfortunately, due to COVID, wasn't able to happen this year, but I'm just overwhelmed with gratitude with all the support that I received from both friends and artists and institutions and like basically everybody. Like I, I'm so blessed and so happy to, to have met the people that I have and had the opportunities that I've had to grow this into something more. 
than than just an Inktober one month challenge in, in 2018. So what's next? So for the past year, I've been learning how to tattoo. Uh, I'm self-taught, novice, super novice. And this is, this, it's, this is a totally new world. It's a totally new medium. And there's so many more things for me to learn here, um, which is really exciting and really scary. Um, but again, I'm really grateful for all the opportunities that people have given me to put, put a needle in their skin and, and want to have my art on their body. It's really, it's really, really interesting. And I'm, I'm so grateful for um, the ability to be able to learn this new skill now. Um, also, what's next? I would love to write a book one day. I don't know if it would be like a full-fledged book, but like maybe another sort of zine comic, short comic sort of thing. And um, perhaps self-published, perhaps not. Um, we'll see. But yeah, I'm, I've been doing this for two years now. I'm really, really excited to see where the next two, four, six, eight, ten, and beyond years take me um, and see how how my art changes from there. But yeah, that's about it for, for what I have to say. But uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions, I would love to answer them now and have a discussion with you. Okay, so thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Justine. So we are taking questions as well. So you can either use the raise my hand option in your zoom i believe you have that option or you can write those questions down uh, or you can be asked to to be unmuted and i'll unmute you and and you can pose your question to to justine so we have here the first question actually so is art always drawn from emotions that's that's a very uh, good question and I'm glad that you asked that because no, um, a lot of my comics are, and a lot I, I do turn to it um, quite often in times of sad emotions and, and stuff like that. But for the more beautiful, when when I'm when I'm trying to just like appreciate my, my culture or be or, or I'm inspired by like Chinese symbolism and stuff like that. I take a much more like graphic designy approach to it. And I just want to create a piece that's simply beautiful aesthetically. Um, and it's not so much of an emotional outlet per se. So when it comes to my illustrations and my comics uh, that I, I do like on a more regular basis, I'd say those are a lot more emotionally charged, but for my paintings, or, you know, limited edition prints, like stuff that's um, more of like a one-off fine art piece um, or paintings, those ones are more informed just by, by making something beautiful and symbolic rather than trying to have some sort of catharsis for myself. Thank you. So next question, uh, do you still use multiple sketchbooks? <laughs> I kind of do. I have a lot of sticky notes and um, I do have a lot of sketchbooks, but they're, they're more of notebooks now. I do most of my sketching on my iPad now. So that's, um, that's kind of where most of the drawings live, but I have a lot of notes jotted down on sticky, you know, sticky post-it notes. And I do have like a couple, like sometimes if I think of something while I'm at work, like I write in my work notebook, so lies, lives there too, but uh, not in the same way that I did when I was a kid. Thank you. So next question. Um, you mentioned that you started just doing tattoo quite recently and you explained a little bit about the story. Why tattooing? Is that something you needed to add to your art or just happened randomly? So I've always been interested in tattoos. Like I have a decent amount of tattoos myself. I've been interested in them as an art form. Uh, when I was younger, I would always watch like Ink Master and stuff like that. Um, just seeing them as, as such 
a beautiful way uh, to express art. Um, but for me, I, I never even thought that I could teach myself how, ever. I didn't think that this was a viable thing. Uh, I thought that there would be, in traditional tattooing there, you know, you, you get an apprenticeship and it's kind of changing a lot more these days. There's a lot of self-taught tattoo artists that I know now, like in the past three years or so. Um, so I didn't think it was viable because I was like, oh, I'm going to have to get an apprenticeship. I can't do that. I don't know anybody and, and whatnot. Um, but I think I was doing an art fair. I was in like a group show about like a year and a half ago or something. And someone was like, I would get that print as a tattoo. Like you need to, you need to tattoo that on me. And I was like, okay, like maybe, maybe I can learn. And then I started thinking about it and I was like, okay, like started doing research on, you know, what to do. And um, my friend Kyle helped me out a lot. He's covered in tattoos, has a lot of tattoo artist friends. So he kind of guided me on my way to learning. I'm still learning. There's so much to learn. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have here another question. It's a little bit connected as well to tattooing, but I'm just going to read it out to you. So first of all, amazing talk. Thank you very much for sharing your story. Uh, I was just curious how long you have been tattooing and what method do you use and how did you get into the industry? Cool. So I use machine. Um, I've been tattooing basically exactly one year but there were kind of gaps in between because um, during COVID, uh, I guess I didn't tattoo for like three months because we weren't uh, in the space. Like we weren't able to kind of go to the studio. So I guess in total, probably about nine months or so. But yeah, I think one of my first tattoos I ever did was like last summer, but then I took a big break and then kind of resumed zoomed in um, in October of 2019 and then just kind of sporadically doing them since then but uh, in the past like since June I'd say it's probably ramped up a lot. Thank you and uh, thank you for the question as well. So next question I have here is as a young artist myself I find myself struggling very much during these times with lack of work, lack of support how have you been handling with those things and do you have any advice? Mm -hmm. So for like during the, the main lockdown period, I, I was feeling very kind of lost for a while and I didn't really have any motivation to do, to do much of anything. Um, but I've been very, very fortunate to have my day job still like I've been able to work from home the whole time so I kind of just poured myself into that and learning other art forms so I, I picked up the guitar and uh, that's something that you know I'm still still learning a lot uh, of as well but perhaps like a shift in the medium might be a way to combat um, you know, feeling kind of hopeless and lost, maybe shifting yourself into something completely new might give you inspiration that you can take back to your previous art form. Thank you. Uh, next question. Um, your work talks uh, about light and about darkness uh, very much. So can I ask you what brings you light to your work and what might bring some darkness as well? Sure. So light, I am absolutely surrounded as, and I kind of mentioned in the community piece by the most amazing supportive people that I could imagine. My colleagues at work, I'm going to cry a little bit. <laughs> My colleagues at work are so supportive with everything. My friends, like everybody, if I ever have something that I need to talk about, I have a beautiful support system and, and they, they definitely fill me with light every day. Um, darkness, kind of existential problems. That's, that's something that I've been kind of dealing with a lot this year in particular, which I think a lot of people have been as well. And just feeling like, why am I here? Like, why am I 
alive, I guess. Like what, what's the, what's the point of, of all of this? Um, that's, that's something that I, I get, you know, caught up in a lot and especially living at home, working from home all the time before I was uh, like in, in lockdown period, I just had like way too much time to like live in my mind. And I kind of was spiraling a bit in, uh, in that feeling imposter syndrome, um, feeling inadequate in romantic relationships. Those also bring me darkness. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so next question is, you've mentioned that you draw a lot with black, with uh, white, and a little bit of red. Uh, is that the main reason why you mostly don't draw nature and you choose to draw small minimalistic things, or it's because you don't get interest in nature? Interesting. I don't, um, I don't necessarily think that I don't really draw nature, but perhaps I draw it in a in a more microscopic way like i like to draw plants um and i like to draw flowers and and whatnot i i like to draw a lot of animals too if you check out my um in my instagram i have a lot of like birds and stuff like that but um i don't really do landscapes you're right i um that's not really something that i ever really thought about even even when I was younger, um, portraits were my favorite thing to draw. So I think I did center a lot of things around people rather than large landscapes. Thank you very much. Um, so another question here. Do you think you still consider yourself an, an entrepreneur? Is it first artist, second entrepreneur or the other way around? Definitely artist first. Um, I all of the entrepreneurial things, um, I kind of, I don't really do them with a business mindset. I, I have like a, a logistical process in my mind, but my goal is first and foremost to create things that I like and then people often resonate with them and then ask me if they could buy them, which is great. <laughs> but um, when, I, when I started this, I didn't think about selling prints at all. Um, just people had commented being like, hey, can I, can I, have you thought of making prints of this? Have you thought of like putting this on a tote bag? And then it just kind of went on from there. And I kind of pick and choose the items that I, um, I want to create in a shop format. Um, but I wouldn't say that, like, I don't have any traditional shop set up. It's mainly just like markets I go to here and there. Uh, we'll see in the future, but I'd say definitely artist first and foremost. Okay, thank you very much. So we have two more questions here so far, but feel free to, to if you have some questions, just to, to, to keep them coming. We still have a little bit of time for some questions and answers. So the next question um, that I have here is, uh, right now, in terms of your inspiration, what is inspiring you the most? Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's kind of a tricky one. I'm, I'm because I'm feeling quite emotionally content right now. Uh, the comics, I have quite a few on the back burner that I, I've, you know, been, been harvesting from previous emotion, bouts of emotional uh, disruption. Um, but now, like, I'm kind of focusing more on the tattoo element. And I think tying into what I, what I mentioned before with, you know, does it always have to have an emotional background to it? I think with the tattooing, I'm really enjoying just designing things for design's sake um, instead of having some sort of sadness or extreme happiness or something that's that's tied into them so i think the the inspiration that's that's coming through is really just wanting to design things that are cool and um i also mentioned before that i'm i'm looking at a lot of birds right now so birds are one of my favorite things to draw right now <laughs> thank you so and here the so the last question is do you um, work better alone or do you like to collaborate more? Hmm. I'd say I do like to work better alone. And it, it's funny, like sometimes 
if I, if I was working from home one day, like Matt, Matt would sometimes come over because he, uh, he's a freelancer and, uh, we'd just have like little work days together and we'd be, we'd be like sitting, working for a few minutes and he's like, why, like, why is it quiet? Like, are you going to put on music? And I was like, Oh, like, I didn't even think about it. I'm just like in my own quiet zone, doing my own thing. Um, and I think in, in an artistic way, I do like to work better alone and kind of just keep my head down and focus on the task at hand. When it comes to my day job work where I'm working in marketing, I love collaboration. Like I mentioned before, my teammates are awesome and uh, we really bounce ideas off of each other a lot more. But uh, for my personal comics and, and whatnot, I like being in my own little bubble. Thank you. And actually, we do have here one, one more question. Um, you've mentioned that you're thinking about writing a small book. Um, and I noticed that lots of your drawings have a history. Do you find it very personal to share that history more than to share your drawings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely do um, find it more personal. And it's, it's cool to kind of get that vulnerability out there. Like I, I think in the past two years, I've really harnessed onto that vulnerability. I've always been a sensitive, emotional person, but I never have really done so much introspection as I have in the past two years. So it's like these artistic practices have really helped me to connect into connect to something within myself that like I wasn't even, I didn't even know existed. So it'll be interesting to see in the next few years, like how much more I can tap into that personal vulnerability. Um, yeah, I, I do have a couple of little short story, not short story things, but um, kind of zines planned right now. So hopefully I'll work on those whenever I have some downtime and maybe get another zine out next year. <laughs> okay, so, so far no extra questions. Although uh, if there's any question that you might, might think after we end the talk, I believe you both, you all have my email. Please send the question to my email. I will direct the question to, to Justine right afterwards as well. And I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you again very much. Thank you, Justine. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the talk. Your work is amazing. If you're visiting the garden, we have some of Justine's prints there. They're wonderful. And please visit her website, her social media as well. And we'll see you hopefully next week for another in the last art talk of this season. And have a lovely weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. I appreciate all you being here. <laughs> Thank you.